on this Sunday of Lent, I bring greetings today from Salem United Methodist Church, where I spent a good portion of the last hour and a half. Beth and I were, Reverend Beth uh, Nelson and I have exchanged places twice during Lent just to make sure we stay in touch because during Holy Week, we are going to have our Monday Thursday here for both congregations and our Good Friday service there for both congregations. So I bring greetings from those at Salem United Methodist Church. If you're a guest today, we welcome you and hope that your life will be nurtured by our time together in worship. Let us pause, let us gather our thoughts and that from the busyness of life and all the scheduling that we have to live with and catch our breath and let us pray. Gracious God, the Alpha in the Omega, we gather in the midst of this beautiful day where the rising sun has reminded us of the warmth that is before us during this opportunity and season of spring. May this bright day assist us in overcoming those challenges we might individually face. May it give us a little expression of warmth within our own life's experiences. May it assist us to overcome the coldness of heart and disappointment, perhaps, and despair, and to renew our faith and once again have the opportunity to share in the blessings, the fruits and the gifts of sharing that faith with you and with one another. We ask of this in thy name, for we have gathered to be with you and now prayerfully ask that you join and be with us in thy name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. The Reverend Bob Richards is filling in today for Nancy Richards. How's that sound, Bob? <laughs> Sounds good. So we welcome Reverend Bob Richards, who's going to lead us in most of the worship today. Bob, would you please, sir? Let us stand for the call to celebration. In it, you'll hear some familiar words of a hymn, but they lend themselves to a call. Lord, open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast prepared for me. Lord, open our ears that we may hear the voices of truth and send us clear. Lord, open my heart and let me prepare to receive your presence without despair. Then, Lord, open our spirits and help us to share all of your love with open hearts, open minds, and open doors everywhere. Blessed be our Lord. The opening hymn is numbered 286 in the hymnal, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Yeah. 
please let us take these moments in worship to warmly welcome and to celebrate everyone's presence here today. Greet one another, please. Hey, I know there might be some other children with us if they'd work their way forward at this time. If there's any other children with us, if they'd work their way forward. Well, good morning, gang. How are we doing? Good? Hey, let me just uh, see if you can think about what this would be if in the middle of the service I would take water and I would start to just sprinkle everybody with water. Huh? What would that be? You know? I mean, I mean, come on, think about it. If I walked down here and I started to throw water, sprinkle water, what, what, what would that be? Huh? Come on, take a guess. What would it be? What do you think? Sprinkling. It would be what? Sprinkling. Sprinkling. Yeah, it could feel yeah. a little bit like sprinkled rain. What else do you think it would be? Uh, Any other guesses? Good. It could be surprising because you wouldn't know. It's not okay. every day that. Yep, yep. But wait, wait. What happens if there was a font here that had water in it? And I touch the water and I touch the person and I said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, what would that be with water? Huh? What is it, Charlie? Baptism. What? Baptism. Baptism. <laughs> Do you know that in the early church sometimes that's how they baptized people? They would take a lot of water and they would throw it out over the entire group of people and they would say, You were all baptized. That's how it would work, just like this. Just go like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty simple, huh? Yeah. Well, what are some of the other things that we do with water? Yes. We drink it. We drink it. We have to drink water, don't you? Did you know you have to drink water? In fact, these bodies that we're in take a lot. Most of our bodies is what? Liquid water. That's right. What else do we use water for? To keep us healthy. To keep you healthy. That's right. Because what do you do with water? Let me give you a clue. 
Huh? Come on, what do you do with, uh, what do you do with do water? Do you swim? Well, you swim, okay, that's what I was thinking, yeah. Do you wash yourself with You them? wash yourself, sure. We use water to drink, we use water to wash ourselves, and in the church sometimes we use water to baptize. We wouldn't be able to be here, would we, without water? You know what I wanted to remind us today as we go through Lent and prepare for Easter? Often we think about the fun things like chocolate eggs, marshmallow bunnies, Easter egg hunts, chicks. But one of the things I want us to remember today is to give thanks for something very simple, something we need every day, water. Let's pray. Gracious God, bless our children, we ask and pray that they may always remember and give thanks for the gifts of life, like water, and like the love of the people around them. Both are needed for our children to be healthy and also to be faithful. Be with them, we ask and we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hey gang, thanks for coming up this morning. You can head off to Sunday school or back to your pews. Liz, I think you have an announcement I to make. I do. Okay, please. Um, so pretty soon is going to be our Easter party here at the church. It's going to be March 25th, which is the Sunday before Easter. Um, for that party, we have an egg hunt. We had our first one last year, and it was awesome. So we're going to do it again this year. This year, um, I already have the eggs up here. All I need you to do is take a bag of eggs, take it home, fill them with candy or stickers, erasers, anything, and then bring it back here um, the Sunday before the 25th which would be next Sunday. next Sunday so you have one week to get these all filled up with candy and that's what our kids will find on during their Easter party all right thanks and I think that Easter egg hunt's going to take place in the sanctuary in the uh, chapel or maybe outside okay maybe it will be spring by then amen uh, some of the opportunities we share in worship is a time for everyone to celebrate a, a, a joy or a concern if you will uh, I was looking to see if uh, Bill and Audrey were here today. Bill's been ill, and I don't see them here. This week, they're celebrating their 57th anniversary this Thursday. So when you see Bill and Audrey in the next couple of weeks, you may want to celebrate with them. Are there any other joys or concerns that you may have today? Yes, Ann. Do you mind? Just pass it along there, please. Thanks, Mary. I don't usually ask for something, but... Today I'd like some um, prayers for my son who is looking for new employment and uh, uh, he's, uh, we want to have him find the best for him. So right, that's what I'm looking for today. Thank you. And the part that you forgot about is that His name is John. To, and his name is John and you want it to be in Pittsburgh. No. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone said, Lord, hear our prayers. Any other joys, concerns? Joan, yes. Go ahead. Prayers for Kelly's family. Her mother passed away this week. Ah. Prayers for Kelly and for her extended family on the loss of her mom. Lord, hear our prayers. I want to pray for prayer of thanks to those United Methodist women among us. Yesterday, uh, over a dozen young men who have to put in community service most of whom were affiliated with Schumann, uh, were here. And this is the second Saturday they've been able to come and work here at Calvary. And yesterday they cleaned all these pews that were sitting in this morning, all of the tables, chairs downstairs, and the United Methodist woman made it possible. And uh, Mike was here as well, our food coordinator, one of our food ministry coordinators, uh, Mike Schnicken. And uh, I'm gonna give thanks, a prayer of thanks, because they all had a beautiful lunch and they worked here for hours, and we owe them, a, uh, we're in debt to them. So let us now continue. Bob, if you would, share the prayer time. Our prayer hymn is numbered 289, and we especially would let you know that the altar rail of this church is always open, but especially in these days of Lent, we invite you, if you have something that you would like to speak to God about, 
by way of asking forgiveness, renewal of life, and indeed, if you have never confessed Christ as your Lord and Savior, the altar rail is open. You remain seated, please, during the hymn. first time at Calvary, I ask that you would now take out from your bulletin an insert entitled Prayer Partner Ministry. During Lent, the six Sundays of Lent, we've been praying for those incarcerated at one of our prisons here, our state prison at Laurel Highlands. And so during our time together, I'm going to ask in prayer that you would prayerfully lift those names during our pastoral prayer. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. And Bob, I'm going to ask if first you would lead the congregation in the unison prayer. 
You'll find this in your bulletin or on the screen to my right. Let us join together. Lord, please guide our feet that we may walk in the light of thy peace. Guide our hands that we may stretch them out to those in need. Guide our arms that we may embrace your broken children. Guide our eyes that we may see the things that unite us with all the people of the world. Guide our tongues that we may speak only kindness. Guide our dreams that we may see the hope of the future. Guide our thoughts that we may learn how to create a positive change in our communities and world. And above all, please guide our hearts and our very souls that we may love. Amen. Dear gracious and blessed God, as we have continued in a season of repentance and penitence, as this Lenten season is an annual opportunity for each of us to become closer to you and with a better understanding of our own selves. Lord, today we also pray for the opportunity of renewal. As the world around us begins to change and we see signs of buds and of flowers beginning to break through the earth itself, help us to renew a right spirit within us so that we might break through whatever fear that has been holding us back or whatever memory might be in the midst of our opportunities to move forward. Lord, as the wintry weather comes to an end over the next weeks, help us also to overcome the ways that our own love perhaps has grown cold or our abilities to find grace and forgiveness have been buried underneath a structure or a thought or our own individual personhood because of coldness of heart. Lord, help us to stop rationalizing our routines when we see no need for change or improvement, when we seem to bless old patterns of attitudes and lack of action. Help us to find and be able to journey towards new direction, possibilities, overcoming problems with promises. Lord, help us to be touched by your Spirit this day. Help our lives then to touch others. So this morning we think of those who feel lonely, who need that renewal of love of family and friends. We think of those who suffer in their own bodies because of lack of health or the need for care. We think of those who find themselves incarcerated in sorrow because of loss. But also this day, we pray for those who find themselves incarcerated because of their own lives and actions. Lord, we pray now for those prayer partners who are listed before us. We ask that they be listed in our hearts and remembered. Let us pray. So, Lord, this day we think of those like Keith and Robert, Benjamin, Thomas, Sean, Alexander, Juan, Christopher, Harry, David, Zachary, Douglas, Sean, and Jerome. May those names be more than just names. May they be remembered throughout this coming week as we think of those in prison. So, Lord, hear our prayers. But in these moments, let us pause as well to hear your prayers, where and what it is that you would like us to give attention to, 
and how we might provide our prayers with the feet, the arms, and the compassion, and the acts to see them fulfilled. Let us listen for your prayers. For the words that perhaps are repeated more than any others, based in Scripture, but more importantly, based in a relationship and a spiritual connection with you, let us join together in one voice and let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Two words of remembrance today. Later on after church, there is the opportunity for those that are interested in officially joining our family of faith. I'll meet with those who are thinking about becoming members at 1230 in the chapel area of our facility. And also later today, I hope I have this right because I forgot to get it in the bulletin. I believe it's a concert day here at four o'clock with Allegheny Historical Preservation Society. And today I believe it's Pitt University, is that right? Oh, is it next week, Denny? Thank you. Okay, then I'm going to remind everybody that next Sunday at 4 o'clock. Oh, well, that's great. I wasn't sure, and I was on the road this morning, so I couldn't double-check. It's next Sunday's the concert at 4 o'clock. Thank you, Dennis. I believe those are the only announcements that I may have forgotten. Are there any others? Then let us continue to give thanks this day with the presentation of our tithes and our offerings. Please let us stand and you'll find the insert of the doxology we've been singing over the past couple of weeks. If you don't know it yet, it's before you. Let us sing.
dear and blessed God, for the gifts we receive every day, for the opportunities for water and for sunshine, the gifts of creation all around us, we give thanks. And also for the gifts of the people here, for their time, their talents, and now their treasures. We ask that thy blessings may nurture and continue to follow them, so that we may assist in proclaiming your kingdom as we prayed here on earth as it is in heaven. We ask of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please, my friends, you may be seated. Very nice, thank you, choir. Today I'm going to ask that Reverend Richards deviate from the lectionary 
where we usually are reading in the New Testament. It is one of the books in the Old Testament that we do not, not often read from, nor actually even pay attention to, Numbers. It is one of the books of the Torah, and it's there today that I thought it would be for good to hear a story from the book of Numbers. Robert, sir, would you please? The reading comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. It's found on page 139 of the Pew Bible. You may wish to follow along at this time. From Mount Hor, they sent out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God, and they spoke against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of the land of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses, and they said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. And so Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit any man, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. The word of God written by the people of God for the God we worship. Blessed be our God. How do you deal with complaints? What's your secret? This past week I was reading uh, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker's biography, and I found a very interesting story on he, how he dealt with complaints. If you're not familiar, Captain Eddie Rickenbacker was quite a figure in our society back in the 1940s and, and 50s, up into the 60s. He happened to be chairperson of Eastern Airlines. Now there's a company from the past. And they were dealing with a lot of complaints having to do with luggage. <laughs> and he decided that he would have a meeting of all of those managers across the country in Miami in the middle of August. So he invited all the managers to Miami, which they thought would be a great thing to do in the middle of August. And as they were arriving, they were told their luggage would be delivered to their room. But that isn't what happened. He had all of their luggage locked in a special room, and it was not delivered. Now, in those days, air conditioning wasn't always available, and all of these out-of-town guests were stuck in their hotels without their luggage. There they were, and I will now quote from the biography. There they were for the meeting the next morning, unshaven, teeth unbrushed, wearing dirty shirts. There was no sign of baggage all day long. But that night, I delivered it at 3 a.m., the second morning, the meeting opened, and I looked out over the group, and I said, quote, now you know how the customer feels when you mishandle their luggage. Are there any questions? Meeting over. How do you handle dealing with complaints? <laughs> One of our churches 
I happen to keep this because I called them a while ago and the phone message that they had was this. Welcome to First Church. For service times, press one. For staff directory, press two. If you'd like to learn more about our many ministries and sign up to help, press three. If you are calling to register a complaint, press 576-296-047-320-030-POUND. Thanks for calling. God bless you. Our scripture today is known in Old Testament circles as a murmuring passage. That was the word used in the Old Testament. The people were murmuring, complaining. Several times in the books of Exodus and Numbers, the great journey to the promised land led by Moses from Egypt, you'll find texts over and over again where the people of faith are murmuring. It's kind of reminiscent of some of the journeys that I've had over the years with my family. I would say it was station wagon or minivan days where you heard phrases like, are we there yet? How much further? Or one of my wife's favorites, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but one of my favorites, because some of those station wagons had the last seat face the back of the car, this was always my feared phrase, I don't feel good. <laughs> this complaining in the text today was about manna, the breakfast food, the lunch food, the dinner food. Over and over, they were complaining. It was also about water. There was even a portion of one of those murmuring texts where Moses was instructed to take his staff and strike the rock so that there would be water. Over and over and over again, Moses listens to their complaining. In chapter 11 of this same book, Numbers, where they were complaining about the food again, I will now quote God's response. You shall eat not only one day or two days, or five days, or ten days, or twenty days, but you shall eat for the whole month until it comes out of your nostrils and becomes loathsome to you. I would like to add in the King James Version that God said, so there. <laughs> in our text today, there are some suggestions, though. And I think in our world today and our lives, we often hear too much complaining. So I thought it might be fitting for us to capture some of the things from the text that are not often very obvious. For instance, number one, I think one way to overcome complaining is to improve our memories. Too often, we are in the patterns of forgetfulness. You know that phrase, you don't really realize what you have until it's gone? Often we are told by those experts to become more effective or efficient in our lives. We should make a list the night before of all the things we want to accomplish the next day. I happen to do that. But I realized after the text, there's never this on the list. So this Lent, I'm adding some things. Every time I make a list for the next day, I also add three blessings, things that I'm going to give thanks for that day. And if I'm able to, I even tie them to the things that need done so that while I'm doing those things, they're not a burden, something to complain about. Instead, they're part of a bigger story, a larger journey. They are things that need done because there are blessings to be given thanks for. A few weeks back, I had the honor of being with a number of congregations in one of our conferences in the Midwest. They asked me to come and do some training for them about urban ministries today. And as we were on our second day, and we were sitting around the tables, and they had so many new ideas and different things that I was sharing with them, 
one of the laypersons from one of the church looked up and said, Reverend Larry, I think one of our biggest problems is that we've forgotten what we're here for. Improve our memories is one way to overcome the tragicness of complaining. The two brothers were on their way back to their home. They had not been there for many years. They were complaining about what it was like to take care of elderly parents. Just two weeks before, they had buried their mother, who was in a nursing home for a number of months, and a year ago, they had buried their father. And as they entered close to the town where they were born, they noticed some of the streets had changed. The names were not the same. In fact, they had a little bit of a challenge to get back to their childhood home. They entered the back door with the key that you still had to twist just so, so it would work. They pushed the door open, and sure enough, the throw rug was still there that bundled up like when the door opened. They stepped into a kitchen, they looked around, and they began to remember. They made their way to the kitchen table, and they cried. Too often we complain because our memories are not intact. Improve our memories and give thanks for the things that we have received and have gotten and get every day before you complain about one single thing. Number two in our text, we all need a God partner. Moses was the ultimate God partner perhaps in the Old Testament but there were others, Joshua, Joseph with his many colored coat, Ruth and Naomi, they all acted for one another as a God partner. In this text, and in many of the others in the Exodus story, Moses was their God partner. They would not have survived without. For those of us in this Methodist movement, it's in our DNA. The societies, the classes, early on, there was one question that was on the agenda when they would gather, and it's this. How is it with your soul? For John and Charles Wesley, it was members of the Holy Club, like a John Fletcher or a George Whitfield, or their mother, Susanna, throughout her entire lifetime, would write back and forth to her, all of her children, the people in the text, it was Moses who all the way back to Pharaoh when he stood and said, let my people go. Too often we make it on our own or we think that independence is the way of life and we are mistaken. All of us need a God partner or partners people who we can share our more intimate concerns or challenges, people who can be honest with us and assist us with answers or quality improvements that we ourselves need to hear and to make. I'll never forget one of our pastors in this conference when he was retiring. It was in the years at our annual conference when each of the pastors were given a few moments to speak and I will now share his particular story, at least a portion of it. He said, over the 50 years that we've been married and in ministry, there have been joys and sorrows, victories and defeats. Four children have been born and all of them grown now and gone, leaving their childhood joys and adolescence strivings. They're married, we are grandparents. And he said he and his wife, his partner, had never had a fuss during all those years. And then pausing, and I wrote in parentheses, as though he was deep in thought, he added, of course, sometimes you could hear her explaining things to me a block away. God partners, people who are willing to be on the journey with us, who are honest with us, who are the most important things in our lives can be shared and also learned from. It could be our partner in marriage, but it does not have to be. It can be partners in a small group or a Bible study. 
It can be the person that's across the pew from you this morning or someone who you're about to meet. It's an opportunity to stop complaining and to be creative in finding solutions. God partners. Finally, in the text it's very clear, perhaps the clearest point. Stop complaining and repent. The story of Israel's up and downs, relationships with the Almighty and with one another unfolds in a dramatic fashion. There's incident after incident. Sometimes they're filled with frustration about the aspects of life or where they're at. Sometimes it's with the leaders and with God. But every time their vision is limited to themselves and their immediate needs. They're only willing to look at what's in front of them. They refuse to look deeper inside and also beyond. Stop complaining and repent. You know, for years on a Sunday afternoon, one of the things I liked to do was to catch up on the papers that I'd missed throughout the week. It's not that possible anymore, but I used to love, and I know this is being recorded, so look out, but I used to love to read the Dear Abby columns. You remember those columns? I would often read them from a pastor's perspective and just giggle or get a clue on what maybe I should do. But I kept this one because it was about complaining. This person was complaining because she was sing single. And let me now quote, I am single and 40 years old. I have not been able to find a partner in life nor good friends. I'd like to meet someone my age who has no bad habits. This was Abby's response. So would I. This Lent, I'm asking if you would with me, join this text in a way that perhaps we can learn from it. And when we find ourselves complaining in the midst of whatever it might be, stop and ask yourselves, how clear is your memory? And if it's clear, then what have you forgotten? And what can be added to your to-do list to help you remember it and give thanks? Two, who are your God partners? Do you have enough? Are you one for someone else? And if not, well, get about it. Get going. We all need them. We all have the opportunities. And finally, maybe it's just like the text. It's time to stop complaining and repent and get on with our lives with faithfulness and with a relationship with God and those around us that's balanced and filled with gratitude and true thankfulness. Amen. Let us stand and, and let us sing our final hymn of the day.
help me at last. And the congregation said, Amen. Amen. Do not forget there is a time of fellowship and meal following our worship today for everyone who is here in our fellowship hall, please. Let us receive the benediction. Gracious God, as we go our separate ways, may nothing ever come between us with thy spirit and the unity of our faith. And until we meet again, Lord, we often ask and pray that your face may shine upon us and that you would be with us. But we also ask and pray, may each and every one of us continue to find new ways to be with you and with one another in faithfulness until we meet again. Go in peace. Amen.